an influence I had certainly was, was my education. I attended a small university in Canada called Acadia, and Acadia was uh, Canada's first laptop uh, university or school, so the idea of bringing one-to-one -one computing uh, into education was quite fascinating uh, for me at that time as a student, uh, and I was sort of immersed in that and seeing that happening around me. So for me now to be in that type of environment here in Kristen, but also seeing this happen now in the, in the general um, you know, sense of education, the commoditization of IT um, out there, you know, we're seeing lots of devices in education now, and uh, so it's nice to see sort of where things were then, where things are, are at now, and, and how uh, evolved ICTs have become uh, in the world of education. Quarter adoption of technology is really our, our, our motto. You know, it's a bit cliche, but progress with vision, integrity, and love, that's what we're all about. And progress is, you know, today's world and education is all about 21st century learning. And you cannot do 21st century learning in today's world without technology. One of the fundamental things we've found in terms of adopting technology in our sector is, is what we call the ICT chain. One end is the practice, the use of technology in the classroom or at home or where, whatever the education environment is, the teaching and learning environment, through to all the way down the nuts and bolts of the system, whether that's the networks, the, the servers, the storage, whatever it might be. So for, for us, the key is to make sure that we've got this chain connected together and that as we try to pull on one end, we're not being dragged behind at the other end. So for us, that's, we've taken a, an approach really to saying, okay, whatever our ICT chain is, let's make sure there's nothing weak. Let's try to modularize that and, and, and make it so we can swap it and change it, make it agile, and actually be able to respond in a way that's not about the words, not, not agile as in we think we're agile, but let's actually be agile. Let's actually be able to swap things in and out. Let's put the pieces in place we need to deliver a solution that's going to take place wherever and however it's needed to take place. There's a couple things we, we'll look at when we, when we look at solutions for, for teaching and learning, and one of them certainly is, is this concept of just-in-time access. And we think that's pretty neat, but really, it, it, just in time is not good enough. You have to be in time. You know, it's not good enough that you can start to download something and not finish downloading it before the bell goes. Uh, that, that's just not going to cut it. So in-time access is what we're about, just drop the just. And for us, then, we have to look at ways that we can provide a solution to match that. That could be something as simple as providing uh, laptops to our students that have a high level of service. So for example, if a student laptop breaks for whatever reason, we'd expect that that student would be back in the learning space uh, within 15 minutes. Uh, we think that's really good and it meets our needs. Um, another way that we may approach that would be to offer some sort of storage or server solution, say a virtualized private IP cloud that's there to deliver services as and when they're needed. Uh, we can scale that up, we can scale it out as required to deliver, for example, web services for uh, perhaps a teaching and learning um, course management system. Trying to have authentic adoption of ICTs in your business is, is, is a key driver for us, uh, certainly within our team, but also you know, all the teams in the school. That, that's what we're all here to do. And important in that is how do we provide a solution that's going to deliver benefit to our organization? And so when we look at, at, at what we're going to do, what technologies we're going to adopt in terms of teaching and learning, or as we call it, teaching and learning technologies, it's about sitting down and creating a partnership with, with the business. So whether that's a teacher, a student, um, a school, or a faculty, what we like to do is, is from the beginning create an authentic partnership. You cannot, um, as, we, as we say, you know, we're about teaching and learning technology. It's not about ICTs and education. If you really want to, to have those two things come together, it's that partnership. So for us, it's about people first. It's about sitting down and working together. Maybe it's over a call for you. Maybe it's out in the classroom. Maybe it's here in ICTS. Uh, wherever we need to go to have a good place to start a relationship with. And that's key to, to taking things forward. Putting innovation in place is important to us, and to make that happen, there's some, some practice we've put in place. That, that's, you know, innovation can happen, it can happen randomly, or you can actually create sustainable innovation. And that's what it's all about. Certainly a challenge there is that change is so rapid, but what we need to do is sit down and work with our lead users. We work with our lead users to understand their needs, um, their wants as well. And what we like to do is really have a, a, a cross-pollination of ideas, whether it's from the technology side, from the teaching and learning side, the business side, uh, what's happening in other organizations, other types of industries, other verticals, um, other organizations that work across um, industries, and have a look at what are the lead users doing to solve this problem, solve this need. And, and focusing on that, that's how we get good innovation. It's how we get sustainable innovation. And so we put a lot of emphasis on that, that starting point um, how do we start out 
to, to lead us where we want to go. And all that in terms of innovation is about starting with people and starting with need. Another way we like to introduce innovation is through a program we call RISC, the Risk and Innovation Scholarships at Kristen. And RISC is about having an opportunity for staff to explore. Um, the staff receive extra time to actually get out there and, and, and experiment, to, to take a risk, to innovate around their teaching and learning practice. And so the scholarship is there, it's, it's, it's great, because we, we get to really offer up what someone really needs, which is often time, to really explore those ideas. And by nature, being in education, we know how to learn from our mistakes. And so the risk is, is, is minimal, but yet the gain is so great with respect to learning how can we use the technology. And sometimes our technologies aren't always the cutting edge technolo technologies themselves. Sometimes it's about how you use it. In fact, that's probably the most important thing. And so our risk scholars, they have an opportunity to, to have a play. How, how does uh, this application work and how could I apply it? Let's explore, again, in terms of cross-pollination. Let's have, look how other people do it. Let's also let's look within education as well. But let's look at all sorts of types of practice because we may find something in there that's really key to what we're trying to do. So in terms of innovation and, and, and driving deep into what, what's our need, what are we trying to achieve, we've adopted the ICT uh, investment management model. So what we've done is we've adopted that, that program uh, or that framework of ICT investment management and adopted it as a program called the EDUCASE. So if staff have an interest or students, whatever it might be, to utilize an ICT or TLT resource, um, have some time to invest in something, have some financial uh, investment in a, in a program or project, then our staff get to submit an EDUCASE. Again, we work in partnership with people. You've got to work in partnership to, to deliver EDUCASE.